I just want to ask you a couple of questions before I begin. Who was the last president of America? Donald Trump. And who is the pres present one? Joe Biden. Okay. And uh, during Trump's time, there was a little restriction for visa, right? And when Biden came, he sort of he uh, relaxed it. Is that right? Yes or no? Okay. Now, let's assume that another president comes, next president, and he gives you an invitation to everybody in the world, saying that all those who wish to come to the U.S. can apply. And everybody who applies will get a visa. And that to permanent visa. And how many of us will apply for that? I see only one or two hands. So the rest are not interested, right? Anyway, I'm not uh, asking you all to raise your hands. I'm sure all of you know that life is better there in terms of materialism and uh, enjoyment, pleasure, food, scenery, and all those things, and job opportunities. So you all would like to go there and settle down and be citizens of the greatest nation in the world today called the United States of America. But you know, there is something much, much, much greater than that and that you can be, you see, if you go to America, you will be citizen for not more than 100 years because none of us is going to live for more than 100 years and all your ambitions, your plans, your future, your whatever you have achieved will all go in vain and you will also not be there to uh, enjoy it. But there is a kingdom that Jesus has promised which will not fade away, which will not come to an end, an eternal kingdom which he has prepared for you and me. And he is calling you, every one of us sitting here, he is calling you to apply for that and to respond for that invitation. And if you do that, you know what you'll get? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah, that's right. Eternal life you'll get. But you'll get a citizenship. Do you know that? Turn with me to Philippians 3.20. Philippians 3.20. It says, For our citizenship is in heaven. Where is your citizenship? And from which also we eagerly wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory. That means our present body is in a humble state which will just get decayed one day. But he is going to give us a body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. That body, what God the Father gave the Lord Jesus Christ, that glorified body is going to not fade, not rot, nor see any decay. But it will live on and on and on forever. 
And this is the citizenship you are all going to get. I am talking to those of you who have responded to the gospel and those of you who have repented of, of your sins, confessed it and forsaken it and in obedience taken baptism and are walking in the light as the word of God says. To such people, brother, sister, your citizenship is in heaven, not here. Here we are there only for a few years or a few decades. And uh, most of you sitting here, maybe just think about your life. 50 years from now, you will all be 60, 70, 80 plus. And where will you be 50 years from now? Probably more than half of the people sitting here would be retired and enjoying retired life and probably playing with your grandchildren. But the Lord Jesus says, you know what he said, I am the way, the truth, and not just the life. Life means eternal life. Eternal life is not just living forever. Eternal life is a person. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes into our hearts, when he lives with us, in us, and we live for him, we have eternal life. And that eternal life will never perish. I mean, our, um, I mean, we are not so much interested in, I mean, personally, I am not so much interested in living forever and ever and ever. That is, that is not eternal life. Eternal life, according to the Bible, John 17, 3, Jesus himself said, defined what eternal life is. He's defined eternal life as knowing you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is eternal life, Jesus said. John 17, verse 3. So for me, the eternal life is to be with Jesus. Even those who are in hell also live eternal life. They have eternal life. Forever and ever they will be tormented, we read. But our citizenship is going to be in heaven. And you know, the Lord for this purpose has determined and decided that each one of us should be born in a particular place, in a particular time, in a particular community, in a particular family, with, um, you know, um, all these, you know, the Lord has prom I mean, planned for us. You read that in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. Acts chapter 17, 26 and 27. It says, and God has made from one person, one man, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times. That means he has decided as to when you should be born. And the boundaries of their habitation, that means where you should be born. And if God has determined that and made it that way, what is the reason? Next verse, that they should seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Because for in him we live and move and exist or have our being. So this is God's plan and purpose for each one of you, especially those who have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior and are walking in the light and you have the assurance of salvation. I am talking to you, the first half of this message. And 
since god has determined all these things you need to accept yourself first of all young people you need to accept the way you are the color of your skin the voice that god has given you the uh, uh, family that you are born in into and the surroundings the circumstances place features personality all this god has determined and you know he has sent you into this world and if you don't accept yourself the way you are you will have perpetual problem young people especially because you will be tormented by thoughts of you know because it all stems from comparing ourselves with others you compare with someone whom you admire and see i wish i was like that i wish i was like this i wish i was born in this family you know some i have heard some people complaining i don't know why i was born in this family that is an insult to god it is like telling god lord you didn't plan properly i would have done a better job than you no we should get over all those things and accept the way that god has made us even the color of the color of our skin for instance you see nobody is content and happy the way they are go and ask the most beautiful or handsome person in this world go and ask miss universe or miss world are you okay with your do you accept the way you are they will have some dissatisfaction discontent i wish i was a little taller or i wish i was little fairer i wish my nose was little more shapely or or my eyes were little bluish or this and that they they also have complaint you know that even so called miss world and miss universe and uh, mr world ask them they they are not happy because they always compare themselves with others and then they feel that you know they are they are not like that i wish i was like that that if you don't settle this early in life you will have problem all your life dear young people please remember that and you know when you are young especially the boys your school friends or college friends they try to tease you and try to you know challenge you man you you are a man prove yourself prove your masculinity and things like that come on man have a puff have a peg and things like that i mean that is not the way to prove your masculinity and prove that you are a man see all those people who try to do that just tell me about one person who through the centuries you can think about but those who said no to that it needs courage it needs manliness it needs masculinity it needs guts it needs strength and boldness to stand up and say no just like how shadrak meshach and abednego they said no we are not going to bow down even if the king put kills us or puts us in fire or chops our head we are not going to do that so you brothers if you want to be really manly you should be able to say to your friends and not go along with the flow and get lost in the flow but you can stand up and say no to their enticements and don't try to prove to them by 
joining them but stand against the tide that's what i would like to encourage you and especially young people when you choose your friends the bible says bad company corrupts good morals and when you choose your friends be very selective you can be friends with all but you can have only a few good friends with whom you can relate and who can help you go in the way that you want to go and the way that god wants you to go so choose friends i remember more than 35 years ago i know of a brother who was doing research in this indian institute of science here along with few other brothers from cfc i know the rest of them who were doing research where they are some of them i am in touch but this one particular brother i remember we went to kaban park for a picnic as a church and that day he had a book in his hand and he was reading which was written by uh, abraham kour and uh, h narsimaya the ex vice chancellor of bangalore university both were atheists and they had written a book on uh, christianity refuting it and uh, when i saw that book in his hand i told him man as it is we have problem in keeping our faith fighting for it and enduring in it and you are reading this and you will get destroyed your faith will be shaken and i told him that i was not even married that time and i i don't remember what he said but i don't know where he is today and what what happened to him i don't know your friends may tell you man you are living in 21st century day you what what you are talking about god and all that that's all you know thousands of year old story and the bible is thousands of year old book and you are you are following that is that what uh, 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 how, how you you are going in the 21st century this is all rubbish this is all nonsense just forget about it you know the world is progressing developing and go along with the flow and uh, you know be a don't be an old fashioned person be a modern man and things like that if you are keeping company with such worldly friends if they say man don't believe that old story of god creating this universe this has developed just like that big bang theory this that and all that nonsense if they tell you you need to have some boldness and courage in your heart to stand up against that and say i believe that there is a creator behind all this just one example take this building itself if i told you that this building was there from the beginning and all these windows and doors and pillars were all there we just came and occupied it one fine day and you will say something is wrong with you see there is a builder a creator who did all these things who designed and brought it to completion and we are enjoying the fruit of it you see nature everything runs so smoothly the planets sun moon and stars and everything so precisely even we fix our time according to what we see in space they have never failed to obey god's laws these thousands of years and still man thinks that he knows something better than god almighty and he you know tries to be little god and 
all that. Please, for heaven's sake, dear brothers and sisters, don't keep company with those who undermine your faith and who try to shake you, your, your foundation of faith and make you doubt whether there, whether there is a God. You know, God is from everlasting to everlasting. Even before this world was there, He was there. He is the first cause and He is uncreated and He has no beginning and no end. That is eternal life. Eternal life is not just living forever. Eternal life is the life of God like we have heard in this church many times. And that life of God, God wants to impart to you if you come to him. We heard this morning Jesus' invitation, come, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Rest from what? Rest from all this vexation of spirit, all the pressure, all the stress and strain that we go through in this world, God would like to give us rest and take away this burden from us. He said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That means, in other words, I will not give you heavy burdens and heavy load to carry. My, my way of doing things is quite different from yours. And if you come along with me and take my yoke upon you, you will learn from me because I am... Yeah? Gentle and humble of heart. And you will find rest for your souls. You know, if you have seen uh, any farm or farmer, how they um, plough and how they till the ground and cultivate, you know, if they bring a new ox, they put it with an experienced senior ox in the, under the yoke so that the junior ox, a new ox, can learn from the senior ox at what pace it should go and how it should plow and things like that. Over a period of time, that will also become as, ex as an expert as the other one. So that is what Jesus means here. Take my yoke upon you means I'm on, the, I'm on one side of the yoke, you be on the other side of the yoke. And my yoke is not heavy, it's light. And walk with me, like Brother Ian read in the morning from the message version, the unforced rhythms, unforced rhythms of you know, the Lord. He will not um, give you something that you cannot do, that you cannot bear. And... You know, there is a, there's a verse in Jude, that's only one chapter, there's a verse there, it says, contend for your faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. That means we have to fight for our faith. And without faith, it says in Hebrews 11, that it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to God must first believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. That is God's way. And we need to believe that. And um, we need to fight for our faith. Even Paul the Apostle, towards the end of his life in Second Timothy, he says, I have kept the faith. I fought a good fight. I have kept the faith, he said. But some having lost their faith, have made shipwreck in their life. The same Paul says, 
So, as young people, you know the Bible says in Lamentations 3.27, Lamentations comes after Jeremiah. It's a small book. Lamentations 3.27 It says, it is good for a man that he should bear the yoke in his youth. And one of the characteristics of young people is that they have strength. They are strong. Even the Apostle John says in 1 John 2, uh, he says, I'm writing to you men that you are strong and you have overcome the evil one so God's plan and purpose for us is that we be strong in the Lord and then we overcome the evil one that is God's plan for us while we are still young not after we grow old and get retired like many people say after retirement, you think about God, man. Now you enjoy your life. Why you want to waste your time now? Hmm. <laughs> that is the way that the world thinks about oh, God. I mean, that's just when everything is falling apart and everything is uh, decaying and you know that your end has come near then then that time you call upon God and then maybe you may find your salvation or something like that we do not know what tomorrow holds we do not even know what will happen to us when we step out of this hall because none of us knows not even the best um, astrologist knows what's going to happen next moment and if that was that were true then all these bookies you know they would have consulted astrologers and put their money in that particular cricket team which was going to win even they do not know which team is going to win with the last ball whether they will get six or whether they will be out or whether they will have only one or no ball. So we see life is very uncertain. We think, especially when we attend funerals, we feel sorry for the person whose body we are lowering down in the grave. But most of us, we think deep down in our hearts so that they is far away for me. That will not happen to me so soon. But you know, some of those people who thought like that, they went before us. Well, I'm not scaring you. I'm just telling you the facts of life. So, it is good for you as a young man to bear the yoke in his youth. That means, learn to take up some responsibility. Learn to obey what the Lord has called you to obey because in obedience in returning and in obedience it says you shall find rest for your souls and uh, young men's young people's glory is in their strength and you give your best to the Lord when you are young then you will have no regret. I remember um, Charles Spurgeon, he died in his um, mid-50s or 56 or 57. And uh, towards the end of his life, he said, I didn't waste my life. I gave my life to the Lord early in life. And I have done what I could. Just like the Apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight, kept the faith, finished the race. So we should be able to come to that place when we come to the end of our life. We do not know if the Lord is going to come shortly. 
because everything is pointing to that that glorious m- moment and we do not know how how long we are going to live on this earth and how long the lord is going to tarry we do not know so that's why jesus said come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden i will give you rest and this rest is what is promised to us many people think that this rest is when we go to heaven canaan's land canaan's land is not heaven brothers and sisters canaan's land is here in israel and the lord promised israel canaan's land not as a land of land of rest but a land of promise and in canaan they had to fight the giants you are not going to fight giants there in heaven heaven is not canaan and we are not going to fight any giants there giants we are going to fight here on its earth and today we may not be having physical giants but we have giants in our own flesh we see so many giants ruling and controlling some of us making you obey its dictates tempting you to do what you know is wrong and things like that trying to pull you tempt you and try to drag you down and weaken you and spoil your testimony so that at the end of your life you become useless good for nothing it should not happen like that the lord should not be able to tell you on that day depart from me you workers of iniquity you know who were these people about whom jesus spoke in matthew chapter 7 verse 21 and 22 just turn with me there matthew 7 verses 21 and 22 not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven many will say it's not just a few many will say to me on that day lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles no these were not ordinary people these were the, these were so called servants of god who did ministry in the name of christ and they not only just preached the gospel they did more than that they said they prophesied in jesus name they cast out demons in jesus name and they performed many miracles not just one or two many miracles in jesus name and what will the lord tell such people he says and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness see these people were not practicing lawlessness externally externally they had a very good testimony they were great preachers and they wrote perhaps many books and preached soul stirring sermons and they may be there available on audio video dvd all those things and they must have been acclaimed preachers with lot of followings and maybe having had international ministries of so and so but to such people in the world the lord says i never knew you that means they didn't have a first of all the lord never recognized them i believe even till today 
there are so many mega churches and so called big big preachers who are not recognized by the lord you know in earlier days we used to read on school educational institutions uh, this school is recognized by the government of so and so that state uh, or this college is recognized by this university uh, things like by the gov- by the government so like that these people were are not recognized by the lord jesus that's what he is going to say to them on the last day i do not know you i never recognize you depart from me you workers of lawlessness and these people were not just they did lawlessness once in a while but it says you who practice lawlessness you see what is the reason why we emphasize so much about inner life here in this church because jesus said first cleanse the cup inside inside of the cup he told the pharisees you are pharisees you are like whitewashed tomb externally you look so holy and pious and good your testimony is good your doctrine is good read in matthew 23 jesus himself validated their doctrines saying their doctrines are good do them but don't follow them so these people were externally okay as long as i have a good testimony externally people think well of me that was their satisfaction but internally they were like whitewashed tomb you know how the tomb is you rip it open what you can see all rotten flesh sting stench and you feel like running away from there inside it is like that but externally oh sunday morning hello brother praise the lord all that kind of greetings and you know all this but you know the lord looks at your heart when samuel went to anoint the next king of israel he was so fascinated by seeing all the seven sons of um, jesse he thought this must be the one that must be the one and the lord re- rejected all the seven because they were externally fantastic they were like you know well built and uh, um, like mr israel something like that but the lord said i will not look at the outward appearance of man i look at the heart and they didn't even think about david that he is part of their family he was there tending sheep in the field then he asked is it all that you have your sons then jesse said oh, no there is one fellow there in the field you know that story then finally david a shepherd boy comes he doesn't know anything what's happening here he comes and the lord says this is the one god saw his heart and towards the end of his life the lord said this is a man after my own heart even though david has his own weaknesses he fell but still he was not ashamed to confess that he let the whole world know about it what was there inside he as it were asked the lord lord you flash your flood light into my heart and or rip it open and let everybody see what is there my thoughts my intentions my motives everything let the people know how i am inside and he wrote a psalm psalm 51 and we have been reading that for the last 3000 years and every christian knows about what david did but still in spite of that the lord says this is the man after my own heart in him is no guile and jesus was not ashamed to be called 
son of david why because david was very transparent before god my dear brothers and sisters i want you to check and look into your heart today and see what is going on there do you have all worms inside of your heart like the worms eating up the corpse in the tomb and externally everything is so fine sometimes when i go to the cemetery and see some of these beautifully um, done up uh, graves i feel like sitting on them and you know enjoying the surrounding and the scenery and the serenity there but if there was a hole inside you know you 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 couldn't sit there on that it will be stench so don't you be like that white washed walls god forbid that none of us should end up like that like white washed walls and then of whom the lord has to say on the final day depart from me i never knew you you who practice iniquity remember that word practice they were all the time practicing lawlessness not once in a while they were failing and repenting for such there is a hope but these fellows were not interested in that they said oh once saved always saved no matter what i do my ticket is reserved in heaven i think that doctrine is sending many people to hell more than any other doctrine because they think that once they said this magic prayer of jesus come into my heart they got their visa and you know every visa has an expiry date every medicine has an expiry date every human being has an expiry date everything on this earth has an expiry date even this planet earth has an expiry date you read it read about that in the last chapters of revelation even this earth will flee away from the presence of god and there will not be found any place for it it says it will be burnt up this with all its wealth and pomp and glory everything will come to ashes one day so what manner of um life you and i need to live peter says seeing that all these things are going to perish one day so brothers and sisters the invitation is for you today the lord says come to me morning also we heard the spirit and the bride say come jesus is you know that invitation may end any time but as long as we have breath in our nostrils there is hope for every one of us when the lord says come you better come and there may not be tomorrow there may not be another chance some people say okay i'll i'll make this in later on the bible says today is the day of salvation and now is the time it says not just today it's now the bible says very clearly you can turn with me and read that verse in second corinthians 62 it says uh, maybe i'll read verse 1 and working together with him we also urge urge you not to receive the grace of god in vain see many people think the grace of god is something that we can trifle with play around with grace of god is not like that and grace of god will not be available forever but one day it will come to an end and do not receive it in vain because god says at the acceptable time i listen to you and on the day of salvation i helped you behold now is the acceptable time behold now is the day of salvation it is not today it is now remember 
It is now or never. The Lord is waiting. Brothers and sisters, those of you who have not given your life to the Lord, those of you who think because you're born of Christian parents and your parents are in the church, you are a Christian. I'm sorry to tell you that you are not a Christian. A Christian is one who has repented of his sins and asked the Lord to forgive his sins and have mercy on him and uh, has obeyed him in the waters of baptism and is walking in the light as he is in the light every day in obedience to God's word. He is a true Christian, not the one who thinks that he is a Christian because of the fact that he is born of Christian parents. No, that is only in certificate you can say you are Christian. I thought like that till I was 18 and a half. I thought I was a Christian because of my good upbringing and all that. But a day came when somebody asked me whether I was born again. I didn't know what was being born again. And when he gave me the gospel the next day, I came under conviction and the Spirit of God convicted me of my sins. I thought I was a saint because I didn't commit any gross sins and I didn't live life like my friends were doing. But when I recognized that my inner life was like, like a grave, whitewashed tomb, then I realized, I confessed, I surrendered my life and I confessed, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner. Forgive my sins, cleanse me, wash me with your precious blood and with your word, with your spirit and fill me with your Holy Spirit. And then I obeyed in the waters of baptism and then the Lord gave me, started giving me more and more light and now I can say, after 18 and a half years, that was way back in 1974, I became a Christian. Before that, I was only in certificate I was a Christian. I was not recognized by God. Neither did I recognize God till then. So if you want your life to change for the better and the remainder of your life you want it to be glorious years and uh, want it to count for God, make a decision for the Lord today and now because now is the acceptable time. Now is the time that the Lord is waiting on high for you. Don't postpone it. Do not say, We'll see that later. And people who have postponed it like that have, there is a saying, those who want to get saved at the 11th hour may die at 10.30. You heard that? So there may not be tomorrow. I'm not scaring you, but I'm just telling you. Many people who are alive today, right now, may not see tomorrow's sunshine. I'm not talking about you may be or may not be. I'm talking in general. Those who are living at this moment in the world, they may not see the sunshine tomorrow. Life is fleeting. It's very short. Let's respond to what we heard this evening. Let's bow our heads in prayer. The Bible says, the conclusion of all the matters is fear God and keep his commandments. The dust will go to dust and the spirit that God has breathed within us will go back to him. And one day we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged by him. Irrespective of who we are, Open up your hearts, my dear brothers and sisters. Respond to God's word. 
if you've been struggling with indecision, struggling with doubts, fears, and anxieties, there is help available. There are mature brothers and sisters to help you. Meet with them and confide in them. They will be able to help you. And pray a sincere prayer to the Lord, Lord Jesus. Mean it as you pray. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, the sinner. I have transgressed against you all my life. Have mercy on me, Lord. Forgive my sins. Blot out my iniquities. Wash them clean with your blood, with your spirit, with your word. Give me a new heart and a new mind. And renew a right spirit within me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may walk in the way that I should walk in fellowship with you all the days of my life. Make my life count for you, Lord. Help me to be a disciple, a wholehearted disciple. And I know that in you there is hope, there is peace, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, I come to you, and I believe, according to your word, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all iniquities. Lord, do your part of cleansing me, and give me the assurance of salvation that I will turn my back to this world and turn my face towards you. Draw me closer to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.